Alrighty, let's go ahead and talk about the scribe brushes that we have now. So we're going to hit B on our keyboard, S to narrow it down to the brushes that start with S, and you're going to see we have scribe chisel and scribe standard. Uh, there's going to be features in these brushes that you can use in other brushes for sure, uh, but these are kind of set up in a way we can talk about them easily. So I'm just going to click on the scribe chisel brush, and you're going to see a couple things. Number one, uh, you have VDM options up here, and these are basically when I click on these, you're going to see there's a little 3D icon, and as I click on these, it'll switch the alpha, so if I just click and drag on my object, it's going to leave behind a curve. And then I can click on this curve and kind of drag it across my object here. Now, if you're familiar with, if we hit BD for previous what's new in ZBrush, the deco curve dots and the deco curve drag is similar in that you have a curve with an alpha that you can drag on your object. You can go up here and you can say Z add and touch the uh, curve to update it. And it'll go from Z sub to Z add. Uh, we can put that back to sub. You can change the Z intensity down if you want that to be uh, cut in a little bit less or a little bit more. And if you wanted to really cut it in, uh, you're going to see I have over here on the left this little double arrows, double click. So I have my brush settings open. You can go in here to brush modifiers, you know, and change, the, change that strength multiplier up to two. And again, you can really uh, cut in deeply. But uh, we'll go ahead and drop that strength multiplier back down to one. And you're going to see it just updates that curve on the fly you know, whenever you go back and touch that curve. So as is, is it, it is very similar to the chisel brushes that already exist in ZBrush. So if you hit B and then C, you're going to see we have a chisel brush here. Uh, so if I click and drag on here, you're going to see this is a chisel brush that we can drag on here. And then depending on what alpha we have selected, it makes a different type of cut. However, this one doesn't have a curve attached. So let's go ahead and hit Control, D, Control Z to undo all that. I'm going to hit Again, B on my keyboard, S, and let's grab the scribe chisel. You can hit C to grab that. We'll go ahead and tap to update this curve here. And where that curve's coming from, if you're familiar with curves in ZBrush and curves attached to brushes, is in our stroke menu. So if we go over to our stroke menu. We'll drag that on over here to the left. And you're going to see we have some curve menus down here. Let's go ahead and open all these up. You can hold down Shift, and you can op open up multiple submenus here. So here's all of our curve options in here. The first one you're going to see is curve mode, and you're going to see that's on for this brush. So literally, as I drag this brush out, if curve mode is turned on, which you can turn on for any brush in ZBrush, it'll go ahead and attach a curve to that stroke. Well, so what it's doing is essentially attaching a curve to our stroke, and it's letting us switch these alphas uh, that we have loaded in here, these vector displacement alphas, so we can change the profile of this curve. So you can see when I have this one, it kind of goes in and then in a little bit more. So when I go to the side, you can see it goes in and then in a little bit more giving us that profile as it cuts into the surface now this profile how it goes from thin to thick to thin is going to be controlled by this curve fall off down here under curve modifiers so if i go down here and just like any other curve menu in zbrush if you just click it to open it you're going to see a curve in here and in this case we have some dots on this curve so if i just hit this reset button you're going to see it's going to go from very low on the left to very high on the right if I tap to update, update my curve, you're going to see it's going to go from very heavy. Um, well, kind of depends on which, where do we start our stroke. In order to make another stroke, what you can do, if you want to modify this stroke, you see as we hover over this, it turns blue. That's our brush modifier size. So if I tap S on my keyboard, that's going to open uh, the size menu. And we can just go through here and change the modifier size. But if we go away from our object and tap S, that's going to be our draw size. Or you can go up here to your draw size. And then if we tap to update this, you're going to see it's going to update that to a bigger draw size. Or we can tap S, make it a smaller. Tap to update, it'll be a smaller draw size. So two different ways to manipulate the curve. If you want to get rid of that curve or you want to just kind of drop that stroke that we have on our object. Let's go ahead and make our draw size a little bit bigger here. If we're cool with this, all you need to do is just tap away from the curve over here on your object, or you can go in here to your curve functions and then just hit that delete key. So now that we've gone over here and changed our curve modifier again, it's very low on this curve and very high over here. And we drag out another curve using this alpha. You're going to see it's going to go from very thin where we started to very thick where we ended. That's essentially what this curve is controlling. So if I go over here and say flip horizontal, and then I tap to get rid of the curve and then I drag again. It's going to go from very thick over here to very thin at the bottom. So you can use this curve to go through here. So if you want to go from very thin, you're just going to tap. I guess I should do that here. If I reset this again, you just tap in the middle of this curve and you can click and drag and then I'll make a new dot. You can grab this pre-existing dot and just drag it all the way to the bottom. And again, this is going to maximize your brush size right here, uh, your curve 
attached to your brush here. So it's gonna go from very thin to very thick to very thin uh, gradually. So now if I use this, you're gonna see it's gonna update. Uh, if I wanna widen it out like it was before, all I gotta do is introduce another dot by clicking and dragging in here and we can kinda widen it out. So now it's gonna go from very thin to very quickly very thick and then very quickly back down to very thin. So that's the overall profile we're getting. Uh, one more thing, if you just click a dot and then you drag it off and then drag it back down without letting go, it'll take it from a, a Bezier curve to a very sharp transition curve. So if we go through here and just do that for both, you can see, and then we tap to update this curve, it kind of has a more of a linear look. It kind of goes straight, straight. This one has kind of a more of a straight uh, profile. Then again, if you just want to drag off and then drag back on, it'll be curvy. Or if you just drag off and let go, it'll delete those dots. You also have undos in here for this curve. So you can just really just undo back to where we started. And there we go. So that's the original curve. We tap to update the curve. And now again, we're using these vector displacement alphas to be transitioned along this curve. And it's going to go from thick to thin to thick based on what this curve looks like. Now, there's another really cool option with these, oh, I shouldn't say with these scribe brushes because these options are available with any brush that you have uh, that you attach a curve to. But now you have a sub steps and a curve step in here that you can use uh, together. Uh, another thing I should mention is you can see we have bend start and bend end uh, activated on here. So if I drag this curve out, you're going to see it's going to delete my previous curve. Uh, so I guess you don't have to tap. You can just literally drag out a curve and then drag out another curve. It'll automatically delete that previous curve. And because we have bend start and bend end, I can you know, take this end curve and kind of bend it around. And then I can take this beginning curve and also kind of bend uh, this one around. Now back to sub steps. You're gonna see we get a pretty smooth transition in here. Even though we have this alpha, uh, it's basically just taking this alpha and kind of chiseling through this mesh based on the thick and thin uh, controlled by this curve right here. However, if we go in here to sub steps, we drop this all, it's at 25 now by default, we'll drop that all the way down to one and then tap to update our curve. You're gonna see when I hover over the curve, our curve transitions from red to black to red to black. As it transitions, so here's red and then it transitions to black right here, it's going to plant an alpha. So it's essentially, it's saying every single time I transition from a red to black, I want one alpha put down here. So you can get very cool results. Again, you can use this uh, cut in, you can switch it up here to Z add, back down to Z sub if you want to. You can change the intensity uh, all on the fly to get very, very cool looks. And of course, just keep dragging out and updating that stroke. But let's go ahead and crank our Z intensity back up. We'll drag out a new stroke. And in fact, if you want to space these out more, that's where curve step comes into play. So we take our curve step and put this up to one. You're gonna see, you well, know, it kind of, it makes our, it overextends our line here, but let's go ahead and just start fresh. So curve step of one now with sub steps. You're gonna see our curve is actually a little bit lower res. It's a little bit chunkier, but that's really because we're putting more space in between our black and red transitions. So that way with our curve step high, it's going to put even more space in between our alphas. In fact, if I keep cranking this up, we'll say two and we'll tap off. So that's a curve step of one. Here's a curve step of two, and they're even further spaced apart. So you can use your curve step, which I think the default was, uh, you know, 0 0.5, we'll set it back to 0.5. And then if we take our sub steps and say two, we'll be back to our original curve step. And then we've up to, updated the sub step. So again, it's putting two in between every black and red transition. And of course, the higher this gets, if we put it up to five, the smoother the look of that stroke is going to be. So this has a, you know, kind of looks like a millipede body, just barely indistinguishable between the alphas. And of course, cranked all the way up the default subsets of 25. It's just a nice smooth uh, stroke using this to kind of chisel inwards. Now I've mentioned you can, uh, for these, you can have Z add and Z sub on. You can also have RGB uh, colors in here. So again, let's go back to our scribe chisel and we'll tap off. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the poly paint button, the colorize little paint stroke over here in our sub tool. And I'm gonna choose a red and I'm gonna make my brush size, you know, tap S, make a pretty big draw size and I'll just go ahead and put a red one here. I'm gonna switch over here to an orange, tap, make my draw size a little smaller. I'm gonna put an orange one here. So we have a big red stroke and a smaller orange stroke. And remember, you also have underneath your stroke menu here, the interpolate function. So you just tap that interpolate and it'll, not only will it interpolate the overall draw size stroke, it'll also transition from red, uh, in this case, to orange. And if we want to undo that, 
and we want to say, you know what, I don't want 10 strokes, I want, you know, maybe seven. You can go ahead and hit interpolate. And there you go. Now we only have seven. And of course, if you undo that, you can go from absolute to relative or back again. And now you're going to have a little more space in between the big. And then it'll kind of pack them in when it gets to small. Or like I said, you can undo that and then set this to close circle. And there you go. It'll give you that absolute uh, spacing there. So now we've talked quite a bit about the, uh, again, hit B on your keyboard S. We talked a lot about the scribe chisel. What about the scribe standard? Well, if we click, click the scribe, scribe standard, you're going to see, uh, just like the scribe chisel, I should have mentioned this before, it's set the drag dot uh, as far as the stroke goes. So it needs to be on drag dot. And then if we just use the standard scribe and then drag out a line, you're going to see it gives us a very nice cut, which of course can be controlled by this. So again, if we reset this and then tap to update, it's going to go from thin to thick. And then if we flip horizontally, it's going to go from thick to thin. And again, a very, very nice... Uh, transition there, a very nice cut, and you know we can change the curve step and the sub steps uh, as needed. You may notice though when you drag this one out and then you try to move the curve, it's going to kind of just move the entire curve. That's because we have by default bend start and bend end turned off. This is more of one where you can like drag out a stroke and then kind of reposition that stroke as needed, or go in here and change it to Z add if you want, or you know swap it back to Z sub, change that intensity, you know maybe a little bit less intense or a little bit more intense. Uh, as needed. Now, like I mentioned before, you can change that sub steps. We take this down to one, you're going to see you get a really cool like trilobite effect. And of course, if we take this curve step up, that's going to space them out even further. Uh, and it's essentially what I mean by out. It's just a no alpha, focal shift set at zero, and just uh, tracking these curves or tracking that brush stroke along these curves. Now, if I do turn on bend start and bend end, you're gonna see liquid is turned on. So what that means is if I start at this end and I just keep dragging this out, you're gonna see it's gonna keep updating that stroke uh, along here. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna say, take this curve step deck back down to 0.5 and crank these sub steps back up. There we go, so we're gonna get a nice uh, cut line through here. And so if I drag out again, you see it's gonna go from thick to thin. However, if I keep dragging this out, it's just gonna kinda it's going to keep it very thin over here. So let's, you know, reset this back. I'm going to say undo back to where we had our original stroke here. So now we're going to go from thin to thick to thin. And then as I keep updating the stroke with liquid turned on, it's going to keep dragging the stroke around. And then with liquid, again, I can go back down through the stroke and then I can even update this side here. So again, just a little bit more curve functionality with bend start, bend in and uh, liquid turned on. Now, unfortunately, let's go back in here to BS uh, Scribe Chisel. I can't do multiple curves. So once I drag one out and I drag another one out, it's going to disappear. There are other brushes, though. If you go into B, C, and then grab Curve Alphas, if you watch uh, any previous videos on this, you can actually drag out a curve. And in this case, I'm going to take the Stroke menu and hop over into this Repel Strength. I'm going to turn that down to zero. So you're going to see when I drag on a curve like this, I can drag out multiple curves and then they remain editable. And in these cases, you're going to see that bend start uh, is activated, but bend end is turned off and lock start is turned on. So it actually, it kind of just behaves like a hair strand. So now you could use this to your advantage if you wanted to. Uh, you can go over here to brush depth and you can drag that in a little bit further. And then as I drag this, strand out it's going to embed itself about halfway uh, of course you can change the alphas on the fly if you want to if you want to change this to you know a simple circle or anything like that you can whatever you want that alpha profile to be and then just tap to update and then if we go over here to subtool split mass points you'll see you have the subtool or these uh alpha strokes in one Subtool, and then your column in the other, and then if you just use this bent arrow to put these alpha strokes down below, switch this to subtractive, and then go up here to Boolean, you can use these as live Boolean. So instead of strokes that are dragged along a curve, you can use, you know, multi, you know, curve alphas, which allows you to have multiple strokes that you can go through, and again, swap these alphas out, and have these be updatable, have multiple alphas updatable all at the same time. Now, alternatively, if I go in here and hit delete, we have our column here again. If you go into BS scribe chisel, you're going to see this is positioned right in the middle of my world. So I can go in here to transform, activate symmetry, 
and the Y, and then you can set your radio count. We'll go ahead and set that to six. So now when I drag this out, I'll get six curves all at once, all the way around my object that are all editable. Of course, when I go to drag another curve, it's gonna delete that previous one. But again, I can have six uh, curves around here with radial symmetry turned on. Of course, you can use that with radial symmetry, X symmetry, Y symmetry. But again, since we have a column in the middle of our world, we're able to use radial symmetry uh, to our advantage there. Another thing to keep in mind is after you've done, you know, let's do a couple more. Let's do one here, and then we'll go up here and we'll do this one. You can still go back and make changes. If we go ahead and tap off here. So we've made all these stroke changes. I'm gonna go back through my history until we go all the way back to where we just had our column. I'm going to control tap that point in history. I'm going to go all the way back forward. And then I can do a just last to adjust all of these strokes that we've done uh, up to this point. You won't be able to change the curve necessarily on all of these, but you will be able to change uh, the, the changes that you've made uh, through history. So back from just this point in the column all the way forward, any stroke you've made since then, you can go through and you can adjust that. And of course, that'll adjust not only the Z add and the Z sub, but also uh, any RGB you may have painted.